This I was not expecting at all. This is the new book, The Secret Lives of the Amir Sisters. But for you, actually, were you doing the writing before you were baking? Because this sort of, some of the characters in this came about when you were seven years old. Yeah, I mean, some of the characters in here are older than me. You know, like, they feel like they're older than me. They've lived a long time because I wrote, I wrote them years and years ago. I've been writing, I think, I won a po poetry competition when I was seven years old. And did you? And it, won a, it went into this national book, which I think they still run, I'm not sure. And I wrote this tiny poem and I won it. And um, I've got the bug, I've had the bug ever since. So I've got this back catalogue about as high as my eldest son of stuff, just stuffed under my bed. Some of it will never see the light of day because <laughs> seriously, between the years of about 13 and 15, I just wrote kind of love struck stories. Which is you? Never, never gonna see the light of day. Well, they always say that you, you know, you tend to, certainly in the early stages, you know, your first book, you write about what you know. Yeah. And so this is uh, four second generation Bangladeshi sisters, the only Muslim family in a small village, and they all have their sort of four secret parts of their lives. Yeah. It's, um, it's funny because there's four sisters in there and I'm one of four sisters and mm. my sisters are reading at the moment and they just said, am I going to find myself in this book? And I don't think it's about... I think they were worried because it's so close to my life yeah. that they thought it would be about them and it really isn't, mm. apart from Fatima or who we like... I like to call her Fatty in the book because I... Because it's that dynamic between four sisters and, and how they speak to each other and how they think they know each other and really they don't and it's it's about being a part of a bangladeshi community mm. uh, being part of a bangladeshi family but in a very english community the isolation that you feel but then the comfort that you feel with each other but actually really how much do they know each other and it's the it's normal things like not being able to pass your driving test and and having an addiction to cheese and you know the normal <laughs> things stuff like that, that, we, that, all, that we all have yeah and you, i mean you must write from experience in a way it must be hard not to do that so there must be part of your life that creeps in there somewhere or I, th I, th I think you're wrong to say that it was make-believe mm. i think all of us have a novel in us somewhere it's just about putting it down on paper and um I, I, I draw from so many different experiences. I mean, like, my dad gives me the best material, the best. Some of the things that he says are, like, gold. So I have this little notebook and I put stuff down. Oh, do down. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, or on the phone, and, he, and he'll say, she's putting something down. <laughs> stop her, stop her, that's going to go somewhere. Because some of the things he says, or just, like, if I'm on the train yeah. and somebody says something, I think, oh, that's so good. Mm. And I'll quickly put it down. Yeah, that's know. the best way, otherwise you forget all these yeah. things. Well, also, you, your faith, being a Muslim, plays a big part um, in the novel as well and you sort of wanted to, to incorporate that to sort of educate people, I guess. Yeah, I think it's important. And give a bit of an understanding of what, what life is like. Yeah, I think it's really important because I don't think there are that many books mm, like this thing, yeah. out yeah. there. And I know growing up, I always wanted to pick up a book and somehow people want to relate to it. And sometimes I'd pick a book up and say, I don't get this. And um, I think it was really important to write what I know because there's no point in writing about something I know nothing about. And mm. I know all about being a second generation Bangladeshi woman, you know, being a part of a family that's enormous and then feeling slightly sometimes, who am I? What's my purpose? Mm. And it was really important to write from my experience as well as the things that I heard on my commute or yeah. other things. So yeah, it was, that was yeah. important. And, um, and personally, um, there is going to be a second marriage for you. You yeah. Are, yeah, not to a different person. No, same, same person. person. Same person. Same person. I love the fact that you said, um, I actually, I, I like my husband now. Yeah, I quite like him. <laughs> We're talking about the 12 year rich on loose women. They were saying, but I'm, I'm on yeah. my 12th year. Is it yeah. 12 years? Yeah. So you never know, I might trade him. Well, it was an arranged marriage, wasn't it? Yeah, it was an arranged marriage. And the second day I saw him was the day we got married. Oh my gosh. So, and I, I went on looks. Was that scary? Mm. I mean, was, that, yeah. was that scary? That must have been. Yeah. I, I think I was, I was 20 years old and I thought to myself, what am I doing? But he was lovely and, and, it, worked. and it worked and, it's and really I'm, worked. I'm lucky and, you know, it doesn't always work, but I was really lucky that it did and he's lovely. I'd never traded him in. What are you going to do? Um, I'm just going to have a good old time. I just got I want to wear a nice dress and I want yeah. a cake that I didn't bake, <laughs> you know, and, you know, I want somebody else to go to all that effort for me yeah. and I want to wear a lovely dress and... But you've chosen. That I've chosen. I didn't choose my wedding dress oh, or I any see, of my I outfits. See, yeah. So I just I think it's when you're 20 and you're getting married and it's arranged, you kind of 
get told where to sit and yeah. what to do. And I'm like, no, I'm going to say where I'm going to sit. Oh, it's and a lovely thing to do. Yeah. That would be really good fun. Uh, yeah. So what is going on then? Because obviously Bake Off kind of broke and we were all in that sort of like, where, where's it going? What's going to happen? Go on. So uh, Charlotte Moore, who's the BBC Director of Content, <clears> said there will be more news on what Mary Berry, Mel and Sue and Nadia are doing next. next. Watch this space for some exciting news to come. Spill. You look blank. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to say to you, that's a fantastic idea, though. I would love to work with Mel and Sue. And if I was, I'd say, yes, I am. But I'm not. I don't know anything about Has anything. Has there been a phone call? No, no, there hasn't. Nothing. I mean, the idea, honestly, I would tell you if I did. <laughs> but the, the idea is fantastic. I'd it's love to do idea. something. It's I'd love to do something thing. with them. But I think that might have meant that we're all doing separate things. Ah, uh, okay. this, this Charlotte Moore's a tease, that's for <laughs> sure. She's teasing you. And you're writing the second book of this as well, so you're busy doing that. Yes, I think last year, if last year was busy, I think this year is going Seems to be... Year even busier but i'm really enjoying it good uh, you look like you are as well. happy here. if you enjoyed that there's more of the same right here and make sure you subscribe so that you never miss the best moments from this morning